Hey, good morning, guys. Justin Goodbread, Financially Simple. Driving into the office this morning, and I was thinking about a question I had yesterday. And the question was, hey, Justin, what's an IRA? It was coming from a young investor who really had not experienced the turmoils of life yet. So an IRA, you hear that maybe often. An IRA stands for Individual Retirement Account, okay? And there's some rules, and it has lots of rules on an IRA, and the rules are set forth by the Internal Revenue Service, or the IRS. So the basic premise of an IRA is that you can put money into an account that said Justin Goodbread's individual retirement account. You could, I could place money into that account, and as long as I follow the rules of the account, then the money grows tax-deferred. Let's say I put um, uh, $5,000 into the IRA and I make 10% or 500 bucks. Well, I don't have to claim that $500 of growth that I have. I don't have to claim that on my taxes. And so the next year, now I have 5,000 plus the earnings of 500 bucks and I make another 10%, which means I made $550 the next year and then so forth. Let's say it just compounds. And all of a sudden, that $5,000 account, in theory, um, depending on how you fund it and how it's invested, it could be well worth two, three, four, five hundred thousand dollars by the time you retire. So that's why they call them an individual for just me by myself, an individual retirement account. Okay, so they're a lot different than like a 401k, which we'll deal with that in another little video. But the basic rules for an IRA number one, you have a maximum amount that you can put into the account per year. So currently in this year, the most money that I could put into an IRA is $5,500. So $5,500. If I'm over the age of 50, I can put $6,500 into an IRA. Probably the biggest rule that people um, understand and they deal with is that if I put the money into an IRA, then I really can't touch the money. Let me say, I shouldn't touch the money until I'm older than the age of 59 and a half. So let's say I put $5,000 into the IRA and it made $500. So now I have $5,500. And I said, you know what? I really need this money. So now I go and take my full $5,500 out of that IRA. Well, what happens instantly is this. I'm going to pay ordinary income taxes on that $500 earnings that I had. I'm also going to pay ordinary income taxes on the $5,000 contribution I made. So it's as if I just received a $5,500 pay increase. So I'm going to pay taxes on that. It's possible that I could lose a thousand bucks just on taxes. Well, the IRS says, you know what? Not only are you going to pay taxes on that amount of money, but you're also going to pay a penalty because you broke the rules of the IRA. So we're going to penalize you 10% flat on top of the ordinary income. So now all of a sudden I'm paying 15, 20% possibly in ordinary income taxes plus another 10%. Well, where it gets really dangerous is, you know, you, you people put money into IRAs and all of a sudden their income starts climbing and now they're in their 40s, 50s, and 60s, or 40s and 50s, and life happens, and they haven't planned for it. They don't have the right emergency fund, and now all of a sudden they've got to go grab money out of an individual retirement account. Whenever they pull the money out, they could, they could end up paying 40 to 50 percent, maybe even 60 percent, depending on if they throw in state income taxes, from an IRA distribution. I know an individual that wanted to buy a house, and he needed some money. So he went in against advice of his advisor, pulled out a hundred something thousand dollars to pay a down payment on the house and he ended up paying out of that hundred thousand dollars almost sixty thousand dollars in taxes and penalties it was crazy as long as you follow the rules the IRA grows tax deferred hence allowing the account value to grow 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 grow, grow real fast and if you really just don't take the distribution out of the account until you're 59 and a half then theoretically or what happens is when you retire now you have an account with some value in it and you can go and pull income out of there. The idea being that when we go into retirement, we may have a little bit of social security, we may have some other retirement assets, but this retirement account or the corpus of this will help subsidize the retirement income we need. And so now when we start pulling money out of retirement, we're gonna pay income tax on that distribution, but more than likely it's gonna be at a lower tax rate. 
nine times out of ten. There's tons of planning you can do with this, but there's a lot of rules on IRAs. <clears throat> I've just given you two. One being here's how much you can put into it, and here's when you can use it. So if you keep those two things in the back of your mind, and we just max them out, it's a really good planning tool. Hey, look, talk with your advisor. If you don't have one, holler at me. Give me a call. We'll see if we can help you out. Let's continue to make this life at least financially simple. Hey, y'all making a great day today.